Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story is entitled, A as in Army, B as in Boy. This is the story of a remarkable collaboration that resulted in an extraordinary man. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment. But first, one golden hour filled with 60 diamond minutes. That's an expression often used to illustrate all too well that time is one of our most precious commodities. If you're a young man of service age, you can put that time to highly profitable use for yourself and your country by taking advantage of your United States Army's technical training program. Thousands of alert, intelligent young men are now receiving specialized training worth thousands of dollars in such interesting career fields as photography, communications, and electronics, just to name a few. And these are courses they themselves chose. Now, if you're a high school graduate, you can take a qualifying examination and have a reserved seat in the course of your choice. So don't waste time. Use it wisely in building a good paying technical career. For full information, consult the friendly people at your nearest United States Army recruiting station. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, A as in Army, B as in Boy. A certain Sergeant Bolton will probably always remember a certain hot summer afternoon of several years ago. Nothing world-shaking occurred on that afternoon. No monumental pronouncements were made in the seething capitals of the world. The Second World War was over, but the Army still shouldered a large part of the responsibility of securing the peace. Men were needed. Enlistments were encouraged. Induction centers still functioned. It was in one of these induction centers that Sergeant Bolton met an individual whom he will certainly never forget. McLeod. Yes, sir. This desk, please. Oh, sure thing. Great day in the morning. All those boys sure do stare at a body. All right, all right. Back to your work, men. Sit down, McLeod. Oh, thank you. Is uh, that thing loaded? My squirrel rifle? No, sir. That's good. 22, isn't it? That's right, sir. The chair has got me some good squirrel stews. Well, you won't be needing it for a while now. I'll give you a new one. Well, I'll be dark. You fellas gonna give me a new rifle? Mm-hmm. That and a whole lot of other things, but first we have some paperwork to do. Now, let's see, what's your full name? Nathaniel McLeod. What's yours? <laughs> Sergeant Bolton. <laughs> I never knew nobody with the first name of Sergeant before. It's right nice. Your address? Just the McLeod place on Pretty Pine Hill. Mm-hmm. No RFD number? Oh, no, sir, don't need it. Everybody knows the McLeod place. Oh, I see. Well, uh, just where is Pretty Pine Hill? You ain't never been up in the Smoky Mountains, I guess. No, never had any particular reason to go. Reasons to come up there is hard to come by, I suspect. Ain't nothing to see but skinny dogs and razorback hogs. Uh-huh. Who's your nearest of kin? Pa. He ain't much of a sight, though. Him and them jugs of corn. He ain't been worth his salt since Ma died. Age? I reckon I'm just about 18, thereabouts. Mm-hmm. Education? I had a little schooling, a year or two. After Ma died, Pa didn't let me go no more. How old were you when you quit? I don't rightly know, Sergeant. I reckon I was about, oh, knee-high to a bird dog. Well, uh, can you read and write, McLeod? Not much, Sergeant. 
Always wanted to, though. Always thought I was missing something. Always had a feeling I was put here for more than just shooting squirrels and growing some scrawny corn and, and hiding them jugs from Paul. I see. Well, it's a strong feeling, Sergeant. I've been noticing it lately quite a lot. Yeah, inside of me, you know. Yes. Yes, I do know, McLeod. Well, maybe something can be done about it. Well, I'd sure admire that. How tall are you, McLeod? Ooh, about a couple of hoe handles high. You know how much you weigh? About as much as two gunny sacks of black-eyed peas. The big gunny sacks, I dare say. Oh, yes, the big ones. Well, I can get those figures from your physical report. Uh, Sergeant Bolton. Oh, yes, Captain. Uh, come in a moment. Uh, come in a moment, please. Right away, sir. McLeod, you wait right here, huh? Well, I ain't going nowhere, Sergeant. I like it here. Yes, Captain? Two things. First, the orders just came through transferring me to the command of a new company. Looks like I'm going to get my wish after all. Congratulations, sir. I'm going to request you as part of the new cadre. Probably can get you a T rating, too. Oh, that'll be fine, Captain. Thanks. Ah, not at all. You're a first-rate man, and that's what I want. Now, the second thing is, what is that you're interviewing out there? Well, I haven't quite been able to find out yet, Captain. I know he's about two hoe handles high. He weighs about as much as a couple of sacks of black-eyed peas, the big sacks. And he brought his own squirrel rifle. I thought I'd seen everything. I haven't been able to figure out whether he's stupid or just naive. Maybe you better bring him in here, Sergeant. Bring his papers, too. Yes, sir. Okay, come with me, McLeod. Oh, surest thing you know. Captain Ward, this is Nathaniel McLeod. Right pleased to make your acquaintance, sir. Here are the papers, Captain. Uh-huh. All right. Here's a pen, McLeod. Uh, sign your name right there on the bottom line. Yes, sir. An X. You can't write your own name? No, sir. See, Ma died before she got a chance to teach me. But she said the ABCs to me once, and I never forgot them. Now, if I knew how to put them letters together, You I'm... mean you heard your mother recite the alphabet only once, and you remember it? Oh, yes, sir. She recited the 23rd Psalm to me once, too. I say it every night before I go to bed. She only recited it one time, and you remembered it? Yes, sir. <laughs> Ma always said I had a good ear. Well, I'm like you, Sergeant. I hardly know what to think. Oh, well, see, you ain't gonna turn me down, are you, Captain? Why, man, I can hit a squirrel in the eye clean across the holler, and I'll work hard and learn the other things. Ma always said I was awful fast to learn. Physically, he's perfect, Captain. Well... I ain't never been sick in my whole life. All right. Sergeant, finish the paperwork on him and assign him. I'm going over to headquarters and find out something more than I already know about the Army Information and Education Program. Yes, sir. Who knows? I may be entering one of the most interesting phases of my whole army career. Sergeant Bolton reporting to the captain as ordered, sir. Whew, oh, he's sharper than a store-bought straight edge, ain't he? You'll be a sharp one day, McLeod. Oh, I'd sure admire that, sir. Good. Now, uh... You wait outside, McLeod, and close the door after you, please. Yes, sir. Did the rest of the men give him a rough time in the barracks last night? Well, they started in, you know, kidding him about his clothes, no shoes, bringing his squirrel rifle with him. Uh, I thought they might. It was the usual horseplay, but he turned the tables on him so fast, I don't think they knew what happened. How? In the simplest way you could imagine, sir. He admired their clothes, their watches, their, their store-bought things. And he did it in such a genuine manner that they became a little ashamed of themselves, I guess. By lights out, he was buddy-buddy with all of them, telling them stories about hunting with bird dogs, singing little hillbilly songs. Oh, I never saw such an exhibition of complete adaptability in my life. Well, if my hunch is right, we may see some even more amazing things. I yanked him from the formation this morning because those men are going over to T-7 for the classification test. Oh, yes, sir. So what I want you to do is to take McLeod through the rest of his processing, uh, get him outfitted, and then after lunch, take him to T-28 and sit with him while a whack gives him that new Army intelligence test. And uh, let me know what it reveals. It'll reveal plenty, Captain. I took it when they asked for volunteers, and it's the best I ever saw. Well, you ought to know. You majored in education, didn't you? Yes, sir. All right, Private McLeod. Go with Sergeant Bolton. Private McLeod. Oh, that sure sounds right good. All right, McLeod. Uh, Sergeant Bolton, would you... Well... Would I what? Well, 
Would you call me private, sir? <laughs> All right. I'll call you private if you won't call me sir. Now, what size shoe do you wear? I don't rightly know. Ain't never had a pair of shoes. Okay. Pick up those buckets of sand and step up here. Yeah. Now, let's see. You take size 13C. Wow. <laughs> size pants, Private McLeod. Well, I ain't particular, Sergeant. Just those are these pants. Well, maybe you aren't particular, but the Army is. All right, hold still. I'll measure. Waist, 28. Length, 36. You are a long drink of water, boy. I got a name, Sergeant. Please don't call me boy like my pa always did, huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Private McLeod. <laughs> Shirt? Much obliged. <laughs> oh, I mean, what size? Don't rightly know. Ma always made them out of flower sacks. Okay, hold still. 16 neck. 36 sleeve. Oh, man, I never thought I'd live to see the day when I had me four pairs of store-bought pants and underwear. <laughs> underwear. If I ain't a real dude now. <laughs> Corporal Henderson? Yes, Sergeant. I guess this is McLeod. Um, Private McLeod. Oh, title happy? No, no, it's just that everything's so new. Oh, I see. Well, Private McLeod, if you'll sit in that chair opposite me, please. Yes, sir. And uh, you there, Sergeant, please, a little to the back of him so any movement you might make won't distract you. Right. And now, Private McLeod, you're going to be working against time. I have a stopwatch here, a watch that I can start and stop so I can tell just how long it takes you to work out each problem. Now, the faster you work it out, the better. Is that clear? Yes, sir. All right, now, here's the first problem. This block of wood has different shaped holes in it. And I'm supposed to put them pieces of wood into them holes? Yes, that's exactly right. Can I ask you something, ma'am? Certainly. Can I use both hands? You mean you can use your left hand just as easily as you use your right? Always have. Well, then, by all means, use both hands, Private. Oh, thank you, ma'am. And if you don't mind, ma'am, I'd feel more relaxed if I could take my shoes off. Uh... Uh, well, um, of course. Sergeant, this may be one of the most interesting tests I've ever given. I wouldn't be a bit surprised, Corporal. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. You are listening to the Proudly We Hail production, A as in Army, B as in Boy. Our story will continue in just a moment after this important message. The future belongs to those who prepare for it. In today's highly specialized age, that old adage has more meaning than ever before. If you're a young man of service age, you can build yourself a wonderful future by taking advantage of the new technical training program of your United States Army. Under this new plan, you can train in the specialized course of your choice in the world's best technical training schools. And there are 88 courses to choose from. Now, here's how it works. If you're a high school graduate, you can apply for the type of Army training you want. If you qualify and a vacancy exists, a reserved seat in the course of your choice will be set aside for you before you enlist. Otherwise, you're not enlisted or committed to a thing. I suggest that you talk it over with the friendly people at your nearest United States Army recruiting station. They'll tell you how you can get free technical training worth thousands of dollars. And now your Army and your Air Force continue the Proudly We Hail production, A as in Army, B as in Boy. The afternoon wore on in building T-28, where Private Nathaniel McLeod was taking the new Army intelligence test. And with the completion of each portion of the test, Matt experienced a sense of satisfaction that was almost totally new to him, a feeling of accomplishment that lifted him, and at the same time, drove him to greater concentration and faster thinking for each succeeding part of the test. Finally, it was over. The whack corporal leaned back in her chair, looked at Matt, and then she looked meaningfully at Sergeant Bolton. Matt had a broad grin on his face, and after a moment, he could contain himself no longer. 
Oh, Lordy, Lordy, I ain't never, never in my life felt so all fired good. Sergeant Bolton, are you positive there's no mistake? Well, I saw it with my own eyes, Captain. It's really extraordinary, isn't it? To think that out of the pine woods in the back country would come a nearly illiterate boy who turns out to be a genius. With an IQ of 182. Captain, he's into geometry now. He's spending his spare time at the motor pool. The men are teaching him to take a Jeep engine apart and put it together again. On the rifle range, a hundred out of a hundred. He's never been gigged yet. He's always the sharpest soldier in the formation. He's beginning to read books on engineering. He's ready for his army extension courses. He has come a long way fast. Yes, Private Nathaniel McLeod had come a long way fast. And the more he learned, the more he wanted to learn. His appetite was insatiable, his energy unflagging. A year passed. No matter where he was, there was always a book in his pocket or in his pack or in his hand. On a hike, on a bivouac, in a chow line, or on a troop ship to Germany. His outfit was sent overseas as part of the Army of Occupation, and there his learning took a different turn. Good afternoon. May I help you? Yes, ma'am. Uh, do you have a German primer in the library? Oh, you mean a book for a beginner? Oh, yes, ma'am, that's what I mean. Yes, we have one. It's in German and English, but, but I... Yes, ma'am. Well, German's a very difficult language unless you're taking a class. I reckon I can find somebody to help me, ma'am. You see, I'm getting my high school education through the Army Extension course, you know. I, I do all my lessons by mail. Yes, I know. So many of the boys are taking advantage of that. I think it's, I think it's quite wonderful. Would you care to have me help? Well, uh, I, I wouldn't want to take up your time. My Miss, name uh... is Anne Douglas, post librarian. I speak fluent German, and I'd be glad to help you. Well, thank you, ma'am. Thank you very kindly. I guess we could start in right now, if you've a mind to. You don't want to waste any time, do you, Sergeant? No, ma'am. I wasted too much time already. Months pass. Months during which an amazed Ann Douglas watches Private Nathaniel McLeod master the rudiments of German grammar with astonishing rapidity. More months pass, and his progression into classic German is just as rapid. Then, one day... But, Nat, what's the occasion? Why a present for me? It's a sort of thank you for teaching me German, Anne. I'm sure sorry the lessons have to stop. I don't understand that. I re-enlisted like I said I was going to. Oh. And you've been reassigned, is that it? Yeah. Nat, look at me. You volunteered for Korea, didn't you? Yes, ma'am. I'm very proud of you, Nat. My buddy, Sergeant Bolton, he's gone, too. Oh, I'm very glad of that, very glad. Of course, I'm sorry the lessons have to stop, too, even though there's very little more I could teach you about. All about the German language, that is. Well, what do you mean? Oh, never mind. I have a present for you, too, Nat. I wasn't going to give it to you just yet, but now I will. You remember that Sunday we went for a boat ride on the river and you told me you decided to be an engineer? Yeah, I just finished my course in trigonometry and got a 99 in it. <laughs> Misspelled isosceles in the final exam. Well, here it is. Your present. I'm told it's the finest book ever written on the theory of engineering. It's a classic text in the original German. It's never been translated into English. Gosh, Anna... Well, I guess I'd better get going. The Bolton's waiting outside for me. Wait, Nat. Off we just aim. Off we just aim. Everything okay? Yeah, I reckon. Only it's a funny thing. She kissed me. 
Didn't look like she was going to cry. I wonder why. Oh, Nat, my boy. There are some things you can't learn from books. It sure does taste good. Yep, sure does. Hey, Bolton, do you know why we're being pulled back? Yeah, I think we're being rotated home. Replacements are coming up, and I understand the general may be along here this morning to spark a new drive. Now that you cleaned off that hill... Oh, that was nothing. They just made me mad. Oh, if I'm in the army a hundred years, I'll never know a wilder reason for attacking an enemy position single-handed. I never saw a man so... Hey, wait a minute. This may be the general. You better get your shoes on. Yeah, hold my coffee. Yeah, sure. Like they say... You can take the boy out of the country, but you can't take the country out of the boy. Tetch, hut! Press. I want to congratulate you men on a job well done. You deserve the highest praise, and certainly another cup of coffee. Now, who is the man that cleaned out that enemy position? Come on, speak up, Nat. Uh, uh, right here, sir. It was Sergeant McLeod, sir. Well, good work, Sergeant. Excellent. Thank you, sir. I'll personally see that you receive a citation. Sir? Yes? What is it, Sergeant? I... I don't deserve a citation, sir. Why not? Well, sir, they made me mad. Good. I'm glad they did. How'd they do it? They shut up my book, sir. Your book? What book? This one, sir. Why, uh... Say, Sergeant, do you mean to tell me you're reading this study on the theory of engineering in German? I was, sir, till they shot it up. He was reading it for the second time, General. Well, now I've seen everything. McLeod, when you get back to your area, you report to me at headquarters. Yes, sir. Sergeant McLeod reporting to the General as ordered, sir. At ease, Sergeant. Yes, sir. McLeod, I, like you, am to go home. I've reached retirement age. And in all my years, in and out of the Army, I've seen only one other copy of that theory of engineering you were reading. It was in the library of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. They tell me something. Do you understand it? Not all of it, sir. Well, it's amazing enough that you were reading it, let alone understanding it. And in the light of your background, it's almost unbelievable. I have your records here, and I've studied them. Yes, sir. Now, the manner in which you've conducted yourself during your Army career has, I dare say, hardly been equal. At least not in my experience. Now, when you get home, you'll be discharged, if that's your choice. I'd like to know what your plans are. Well, sir, I guess I'd like to go to school, General. To college. You want to be an engineer, I take it? That's right, sir. Uh, are you an engineer, sir? Yes. And I'd like to see you go to the same school that I did, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. I think it's the best. Now, what's more, you can use your GI Bill of Rights to cover your tuition. So there's nothing that I'd like better than that. But do you think I can get in? I know I could if I'd had a high school education before I get into the Army. If you'd had a high school education before you got into the Army, I hesitate to think what your record would show. I could have done more. I could have gone further, sir. Well, there's no question, McLeod. As it is, however, you will probably have to take special entrance examinations, maybe even be tutored in certain subjects where you're deficient. Nevertheless, the minute you hit the States, you apply on the GI Bill. I'll take it from there. Yes, sir. Well, now I feel better. I was lying awake last night wondering how I was going to make the next years amount to something. Now I have a very important mission. What, sir? You, my boy. You. It makes me nostalgic to sit here on the campus again and hear the same old clock. General, it was sure good of you to come up here and get me started, right? I'll never be able to repay you for all you've done. I like to help those who help themselves, Nat. And I brought you a present. This seems the right time to give it. 
since you're starting your first class tomorrow morning. General, you've already done so much. Well, here it is. The same slide rule I used when I went to school here. I don't know what to say, General. Use it well. I've signed with an engineering firm as consultant. Now, when you're through and graduated, cum laude, no doubt, I'm going to see that you get a fine job with an unlimited future. So make me proud of you, Nat. That's what I want to do, sir. But don't plan on me for that job, General. You see, the Army took me out of the backwoods, put shoes on my feet, gave me every chance in the world to learn, to realize myself as a man. I think the least I can do in repayment is to apply for a commission in the engineers and, and try to discharge some of the obligation that I feel so deeply. Matt, you have made me proud of you. I knew you'd understand how I felt. Lieutenant Nathaniel McLeod. That's going to sound fine. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. Well, we'd better be getting over to the chapel, General. Bolton and Ann must be there by now. You have the license? Oh, yes, sir. And the ring? Yes, sir. <laughs> well, what's the matter? Well, I, I was just thinking, Mrs. Nathaniel McLeod. Oh, that's going to sound right good. <laughs> Attention high school graduates, get on the freedom team today by volunteering for enlistment in the United States Army. You can help America save the peace and save freedom too by enlisting today. Full details at your nearest United States Army recruiting station. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented and transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Mark Hamilton speaking, inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>